Hi there, after understanding the comparison of the three cases of the roots of second order differential equations, now we are going to understand the dynamic stability. And for that, the first case will be distinct real roots case. So let's uh, get into the details of it. We will start with the yt, that is the general solution for distinct real root case and definitely it will have two parts the complementary function and the particular integral if we talk about the particular integral it can have these three possibilities we have understood these three possibilities of yp depending upon the values of a1 and a2 and then we have uh, yc uh, we remember that this was the formula of yc now in order to achieve the convergence we know that the deviation part that is yc should mitigate or it should fade to zero so we should focus on this part this is the part which is the deviation from equilibrium so we'll try to mitigate it delving deeper into it we will understand the various parts of it actually it has two parts which is uh, represented with the help of this plus sign the first part is composed of an arbitrary constant which is a1 and also the exponential function in which we have the first root and the independent variable which is t. In the same way we have the second part with uh, an arbitrary constant and the exponential function that is with r2. So uh, how it can be mitigated this deviation? Uh, a2 and A1 both of them are constants so uh, their values basically depend upon the initial conditions and T is the independent variable that spans from 0 to infinity we know that time starts from now and can go into an undefined period of time in the future so uh, the things that can be uh, calculated by us they are R1 and R2 time is moving that is the independent variable has a certain range of values and a1 and a2 they will be constants so this is something we should try to understand the nature of and for that um, we we want to achieve then uh, the exponential decay and for the exponential decay to happen the roots should be negative that is r1 and r2 both of them should be negative so that we are assured that both of the terms they are decaying over time so r1 and r2 they should be negative and they determine the di dynamic stability so both of them are required to be a negative the same thing that i have already explained and it will uh, disappear in the exponential decay here you can see it is clearly highlighted that with the negative root here there will be exponential decay and here again with a negative root there will be an exponential decay as the time goes on yc will approach to zero and we can clearly see that the both both of the terms they are reducing to zero or getting close to it both r1 and r2 should be negative otherwise uh, convergence may not take place so this is the caveat that both of them should be negative not either of them so that it is confirmed that we are getting equilibrium um, and there is convergence now a numerical example is given and in this numerical example we are considering three possibilities of these roots in the first case the uh, first root is plus one the second root is plus two so both of the roots they are positive in the second case the first root is plus one and the second root is minus two so first root is positive other root is negative and in the third case the first root is minus one and the second root is also minus one so both of the roots are negative both positive one positive other negative and both negative now we can see by putting various values of t here and that how these values uh, change we know that this is the first part of the uh, complementary function or the deviation and this is the second part 
and it is synonymous to this uh, general formula where a1 is 4 and a2 is 3. Um, R1 is uh, 1 here and R2 is 2 here and uh, the sum of these two will give us the overall complementary function. When we put 0 here, the initial condition, the first part will be 4, the second part will be 3. So the sum will give us the complementary function which will be 7. When we put 1 in place of time, then the first part will be 10.9, the second part will be 22.2. .2. So we can sum them to get the complementary function when time is equal to 1. And this will continue. We have calculated till uh, t is equal to 6. So you see that this value that is the deviation that is yc, it is consistently increasing and substantially as well because it started with 7 and now it is um, 489878. So it is uh, 4 lakh 89,878. So it has substantially increased. Definitely when deviation increases and increases at such a rate, it will not cause convergence. In this case, we have uh, one root positive and the other root is negative. And in the same way, you can pause the video and see that how these values are obtained simply by putting the value of t from the first column into this part and that part that is the two parts of the overall complementary function. You can find the sum of these and it will give rise to this uh, row of values and again you can see the value is increasing. Though it is not increasing at the same rate the way it was increasing here um, and you can clearly see that from 7 it has reached only 1613 uh, that is 13 whereas here it increased drastically so you can see that a positive root and a negative root they are playing their role differently and cancelling out each other's effect but as a result the deviation is still increasing now the final case both of the roots they are negative and when we do this we can calculate the value of these two components by putting various values of t that is 0 1 and so on so the values they are mentioned here uh, they can be easily added and we will get the yc that is the deviation so now you see the deviation is 7 and then 1.8 and 0 0.5 0 0.2 and it decreases substantially so now the deviation is decreasing which means that we are getting close to the equilibrium so here we can say that uh, time it is uh, used we can use time with various values of it and here we have the first part which was increasing of the complementary function the second part that was also increasing you can see these values they are um, increasing as we go uh, downwards so the overall sum that is the overall complementary function or deviation it also increases here one of the exponential function is increasing the other exponential function is decreasing so they cancel out each other and uh, we can say that um, they are cancelling out each other but still it is not good enough to cause a decrease in the deviation so deviation still increases finally both of these exponential parts they are having exponential decay so due to which the deviation is decreasing and consequently we can say that convergence will take place and the equilibrium is dynamically stable here there was divergence because yc that is deviation was increasing so it was dynamically unstable same holds for the first case because in this case the divergence was increasing uh, as we could see that the deviation was um, on the rise and there was quite a bit of increase in it so the divergence was imminent in that so it is verified that for the dynamic stability both of the roots should be negative so now we can say that um, r1 and r2 both should be negative so this is the table a numerical example of how this uh, 
divergence or convergence can take place and the etymology of the uh, YC and which one of the parts can play a significant role in determining the dynamic stability of the distinct real roots case of the second order differential equation. In the next video we will do the dynamic stability analysis of the repeated or equal real roots case. Thank you.